So first thing to do when you're graphing is to factor and then simplify and in that process you'll identify holes. So basically this warm-up is like the first three steps sort of of what we've been doing. And then don't forget to factor further. Like I can pull out a GCF of X here, but um, can we factor the, the rest of it further? Yeah, we can keep going. So X plus one on the top squared, and then and then factoring that trinomial out to X minus three times X plus one. Correct. What's next? Well, I see a common or what we call the duplicate factor of x plus 1. Can you cancel all three of them? What can you cancel? Just 2. Yeah. Which, that means our simplified form is x plus 1 over x times x minus 3. Okay? But in terms of graphing, what is the x plus 1 over here? What is that called? The fact that we can cancel that factor out gives us what? A hole. Okay, there's a hole at what? X equals? Yeah, so hole at negative 1 is the x coordinate. It's the zero of the factor that we canceled off. But I'm requiring that you give me the y coordinate as well. How do you get it? You have to plug this negative one into this simplified version. If you plug it back, if you plug negative one back into the original, you're going to get zero over zero, which is what? Undefined. It tells you nothing. So don't plug it back into the original because it's not helpful. So plugging it back into the simplified one, we get negative 1 plus 1, so we get 0 instead of undefined. Okay, so our hole is at negative 1, 0. All right, what are the vertical asymptotes? I know I didn't ask you to do this, but we're using this as a review. What are the vertical asymptotes for this one? Yeah, Perfect. So, remember, remember to write them as equations. Don't just put a 0 and a, and a 3, because I won't give you credit. These are equations of vertical lines. So they need to say x equals 0 to tell you it's the y-axis, x equals 3 to tell you it's a vertical line through 3. Okay? Don't just write 0 and 3. Okay. What case is this? in terms of horizontal asymptotes. What case is it? Yeah, good job. A couple of you know it right away. The numerator is smaller, so this is case two. So the horizontal asymptote, there's only one, and it would be at y equals zero. That's also a line. So you need to write it as an equation of a line it needs to say y equals. Okay, how about x-intercepts? What do you do to find x-intercepts? Good, numerator equal to zero. Back to the original, I mean, it doesn't really matter because it's the same, but we get 1 at negative 1. However, that's a hole, right? You see that? When you plug negative 1 in here, it's a hole. Not, there's actually not a point on there. So, you need to say hole. Or NA, you could say NA. There's not an x-intercept. Technically, there's not an x-intercept. Right? This thing is going to cross, but right as it crosses, there's a hole. All right, how about y-intercept? How do we find it? Yeah. 
All x's to zero. Zero, 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 zero. Uh oh. So what's the y intercept? Yeah, it's one over zero. Is that okay? Nope. So no y intercept either. And domain, I guess, is the last thing. What do we have to exclude from our domain? Remember we're saying everything is fine. That's the first x. Except x can't be what? Well, it's everything that makes the denominator 0 ever in the problem, which is what? Well, 0, 3, negative 1. Try to write them in order. I'm not going to... I'm not going to take points off if you don't. I will take points off if you don't get all of them. Okay? Alright, well, if we went to graph this one, are we graphing the original or are we graphing the simplified? Technically, it's the simplified version, okay? Uh, but we have all these pieces here that we're going to use to do that. So let's go ahead and review graphing real quick. So we have a horizontal asymptote at 0, at y equals 0, which is just the x-axis. And then we have a vertical asymptote at 0 and at 3. So we have one at the y-axis and one here. We have a hole at one, a negative one, zero. So we have a hole there. Please make sure your hole is visible. Like if it looks filled in, or some, if it's too small to see, then I'm gonna miss it maybe, okay? So it's okay to, I mean, don't be excessive. Like don't make it like this, but just make it obvious. Okay, now we have to decide is this thing here and here, or there and there, or there and there, etc. Right? You guys know the drill. Well, we have this point, so that's kind of helpful a little bit, except for it's right on our asymptote. So we still don't know if this is up here or here. Uh, I have told some of you as it's come up, that sometimes these things will cross the asymptote and then come back to it. And those are really weird cases, but that can happen. So, how are we going to figure out where to put our graph? Also, we need to know what's going on in the middle. We have no information there at all. So, what are good points to check? Sure, let's do four. And she's picking that because it's just to the right of our last asymptote. And we're going to use the simplified version. Don't go back to the original. It will just it will just be more work. Okay, so we're going to check 4. So 4 plus 1 over 4 times 4 minus 3. So 5 over 4. That's 1 and a fourth. So somewhere here. Somewhere like that, right? Is that enough? That's enough for me. I'll probably plot that right in here. Okay? Where else should we check? What'd you say? On the other side. Of four? Or I mean, of what? Of the uh, other asymptote. Oh, okay. So, like what the... Because we know if we plug in negative 1, we get that hole. So let's do negative 2. So negative 2 plus 1 over negative 2 times negative 2 minus 3. So that's negative, sorry, negative 1. And then that's 10. So negative 1 10. That's like just underneath the x the x-axis. I don't feel convinced yet. How about you? Do you know where to graph this thing? I still don't. 
What else should we pick then? I'd like to know what's going on a little closer to this. So could you do 0.5? Well, negative 0.5. So, negative 0.5 plus 1, negative 0.5 times negative 0.5 plus <laughs> minus 3. Alright, so we get negative 0.5 plus 1 is 0.5. Negative 0.5 minus 3 is negative 3.5 times negative 0.5 is 1.75. So that's pretty darn close to, to zero, but it's positive this time. So I'm, one, I'm thinking this might be the kind that comes, it crosses and comes um, back to it. This is my guess. So maybe something like this. I don't know. This is kind of a frustrating one. Let's do negative 10, just, just because I don't want to take too much time to do this, but. So negative 9, and this is negative 13 times, so this is 130. So that's really darn close to zero. So when we're getting out here, we're coming really close to our asymptote. How about in between? What's a good point to check in between the two asymptotes? Two, we could try two. So two plus one over two times two minus three. Negative one times two. So that's negative one and a half. Okay, that was helpful. Let's try negative one. That's zero. Hmm. What is that looking like in the middle? Yeah, I'm wondering if it's maybe this style. So if we're thinking maybe that, what could we do to fix it or to check it? Really, I need one more point to know, right? Maybe like two and a half, right? Okay, so this is 3.5, and then this is, I'm sorry, this is kind of messy. Two and a half minus three is negative a half, times 2.5 is uh, negative 1.25. So yeah, it's coming down here. So good, we have that part nailed down. I'm still not sure on this left part itself. I know it's coming to out here. It's down below the line. And it was positive there. So I'm guessing it does that. That's what I think it does. Okay. Okay, so that's kind of the, the process when you're not 100% sure. Um, will someone please grab your Desmos or calculator and just punch this version in, please? x plus 1 over x times x minus 3. Well, we took this other piece, or the other warm-up problem. Thank you, Kenton. Questions on that whole thing? Yeah. Well, like here, negative one tenth. That was when I plugged in negative two. So negative two, negative one tenth. I mean, that's barely below the x axis, right? And so you're just playing it from No, I'm making a point. The point would be negative two, comma, negative one tenth. So x, y. Negative, yeah. So for all of these, I just took the like two, three halves, right? So over two, down three halves. So whatever you plug in for x becomes your x coordinate, and then your result is your y coordinate. Did we get it? That was really weird. Oh. <laughs>
Chicken That's kind of fun to have a weird one. Cooper, will you tell me what to type in here just so everybody can see it? Yeah, so there's that one. Actually, the only thing we were r really wrong about was the middle piece turned back around, which I didn't expect at all. Um, so it actually comes up and comes back down like that. Otherwise, the rest of it looks good. Okay. All right, second one. This time we'll just do... Just the simplifying. Why is this not flooding me down? Oh yeah, it's because it's up. It's right there. Really, this is just a factoring and holes check. One thing I would like to do on this is review uh, long division, for those of you who need that. On this one, factoring the numerator is really kind of a pain if you don't remember um, factoring by grouping. The denominator is fine, x minus 4, x plus 4, excuse me, times x minus 1, so it's okay. Factoring by grouping, we try to pull it, we separate it into the two pieces, like the two halves of this cubic, and then we pull out a common, uh, pull out a GCF in a way that leaves a common factor. So here's what we'll do on this numerator. We'll pull out x squared, and then we'll get left over x plus 4. So we need to factor out a GCF out of this second one in a way that makes it x plus 4. So do you see how if we pull out a negative 1, we'll get x plus 4 left over? Right? Everybody following? Okay. So these are the two factors. Like This really needs a parenthesis around the whole thing. Uh, group 1 and group 2, and I'm going to put a dot there. What you do from here is pull down the x squared and the minus 1 and make a new group of those because those are both multiplied by x plus 4. Everybody good? So you pull out the, the two front pieces and make a new group. Now the thing about this one is that continues to factor. x squared minus 1 is difference of squares, so it's x minus 1 times x plus 1 times x plus 4. So now what cancels? Well, those and those cancel. So what does our simplified um, function look like? It's just x plus 1 over 1. Right? Remember when you cancel, it leaves a 1 behind. And so this whole ugly mess graph would actually just be a straight line if we went and plotted it. Kind of interesting. Where would we have holes, though, on our line? We would have two holes. Where would they be? Where would they be? Negative 4 and positive 1. What did I say about finding that the y-coordinates of those holes? Where would, what would the y-coordinate of this first hole, negative 4, be? Where do you plug it? Simplified form, which is just this one. What's negative 4 plus 1? Okay, so there's one hole. What's 1 plus 1? So 1, 2. So two holes on our straight line graph. There was one on your practice sheet that was actually like that. I think it was the second or third one on the back, where everything simplified down to a straight line after you did all the work. 
Does this one have any vertical asymptotes? No, we just canceled both denominators, right? So there are no vertical asymptotes, they're both whole. You can't be both. In other words, like this x plus 4 cannot be a vertical asymptote and a whole. It's either or. So if it cancels off, it's a vertical asymptote, or it's a whole. Guys, I feel like I'm asking you questions that at this point you should be pretty um, familiar with, especially like if you've been reading this much. It says under vertical asymptotes, step 4, at the zeros of what? Leftover zeros, or factors, excuse me, in the denominator. So if I have no leftovers, do I have any vertical asymptotes? No. Okay? Remember we wrote notes specifically on finding holes also. So the y-coordinate, plug the x's back into the what? Simplified function. It's all there. You just got to read it enough to know that it's there. Okay. I think what we'll do instead... Um, How many of you would benefit from having uh, an example on having, hold on, having an example on long division? Yeah. So maybe I'll do that on one of the ones on the back of your homework. Yeah, we took them. I don't know. Did we not take whole notes for you guys? Well, let's write them down. Okay, so the zero or zeros of the duplicate factors, um, that's the x coordinate of the whole. back into what? The parent function? No. Back into the simplified function. Um, if you need a reminder, That's with duplicate factors canceled, right? That's the simplified one is the duplicates are canceled off. And then And you can just sketch yourself a little something to remind you that. Okay. Alright, that's number one. 
Any questions on it? Well, I mean, it's just, you know, the parent shape, and then go checkpoints to make sure it either follows that or is modified a little. Like we did on the worm. Okay, net number two, there's that one. questions on that one? Okay, number three. Had a diagonal asymptote or a slant or bleak. How are you doing with those kinds? With the kind where the long division to get a slant asymptote. Okay, number four. Everything with this one, it simplifies down to just a line. Like you can see that x minus fives cancel, and you're just left with x plus three, which is a line through y equals three with a slope of one. And it does have a hole on there. Notice that this is the same as your sl your slant asymptote is the same. Okay, last one. Same idea. How'd this go for you? If this was your quiz, what would you have got? Ten. How about hold it up zero to ten? Remember, you need to be at a six out of ten or higher to be able to consider that passing. Okay. All right, well. Let's do an example for you of long division. If you don't care about that, go ahead and start your review. And if you do, go ahead and watch. Remember that if you're missing terms in long division, you need to go fill them in as 0x. In this case, we're not, so that's kind of nice. And then also remember the denominator goes on the outside. It is also not missing any terms. So all is well to start. And then we start asking, how many times does x squared go into x cubed? And you can do things like write it off to the side as a fraction. Well, how many times does x squared go into x cubed? 1x time, right? So put an x above this. Whenever you put it on top, write it above the same degree. So. Our answer here is just x, so I'm writing it above the first degree term. Okay, now we go multiply all this stuff by x. By whatever you wrote on top, go multiply everything by that. So we get x cubed, and then plus 3x squared minus 4x. Now what? Yep, now we subtract. We get 0 on the first one. If you do it correctly, that's what you should get. 
And then 4 minus 3 is just x squared. Be careful on this. I've, I've still seen lots of errors on the subtraction. So we get negative x minus negative 4x. What, does, what happens when you do minus negative? It's addition, right? So this is negative x plus 4x, which is 3x plus 3x. All right, cool. That whole, all the pink is one step. Okay, now we bring down the next line, or the next term rather, and start the next step, which is just a repeat of all that stuff. Okay, so now we're saying how many times is x squared go into x squared? How many times is that? One. I do need to write plus one up here. Okay, x squared times one is x squared. 3x times 1 is 3x. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Subtract. And we get 0 in that case. Huh? So our slant asymptote in this case would be at y equals x plus 1. Hmm? When do we use this? Yeah. Somebody tell them, when do you use long division? Case 3 to find your slant asymptote. What is case 3? Degree of the top is bigger than bottom. Like cubed versus squared. Yeah. Alright, is that good enough or do you need another one? I was asking you. Uh, no, I think I did. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, the rest of the...